Hi guys, welcome to another Chama Valley Maths tutorial. Uh, it's Mr. Gordon here. Again, I'm going to be looking at some core maths questions, but in this particular video, I'm going to be focusing on how you complete the questions with a sharp calculator. Some of my students use the sharp and some use the Casio. So in the main videos, I've been using the Casio calculator to complete them. And I'm just going to show you the key skills and how you enter the data on the sharp calculator. So let's get started. One of the questions I looked at was in the um, it was the normal distribution video, and we had to work out as part of that the mean and the standard deviation of this data. So in the table we've got um, some sleeping time. So how often um, somebody sleeps per night? We've got a data full of um, a table, sorry, full of data here. And to enter this data into the sharp calculator you need to start by pressing the mode button. So you press mode and it will bring you to this screen here and you want the stats function. So on this model it's 1 for stats. Press 1 and then you're going to want to work out the standard deviation. So that's the 0 option here, the SD. So press 0 and then um, I start entering my data. So the screen will be ready to enter the data. You just type in uh, 6.5 and then you have to press this button here, change, and that enters the data into the calculator. And it will come up with data set 1, and it means you've entered one data point into your data set. Then you type in the next piece of data, so 5.5, and press change, and then it will say data set 2, and you repeat this process, keep repeating it, until all the data has been entered into the calculator. So at this point, you need to press on C when you've finished, and then you're looking for the mean first and the mean it lives above the number four you can see a little green x bar hopefully here and that's um, representing the mean so you press alpha to access the green functions so alpha four will get you the mean and that should be 6.2 and then alpha six uh, will give you the standard deviation because you've got a little sigma above the six in green so that's where the standard deviation lives so press alpha six and that should come out at 1.03. If you don't get those two values, well, one of two things might be happening. You might have some old data that you forgot to clear. So you have, there's a reset button on the back of the calculator. Just grab a pen or a pencil and push that reset button. That will clear all your data banks. Or you made, made a mistake when you're, you, you were entering the data. So if you want to check the data that you've put in, you go to the wheel button here and you press down and that will let you look through all the data that you've entered and then you can edit it and once you you're happy with it you press on C and, and repeat the process <coughs> excuse me so carrying on um, we had a linear regression video that we did and we were looking at um, how you work out the gradient and the y-intercept we needed these two values it'll make more sense if you watch the linear regression video and we had to enter this data here and this was data that we used to make a scatter graph so along the x-axis we had the age of people and on the y we had the number of words they could type in a minute into a text message and we had to enter this data in pairs so the 39 was like the x value and we plotted it against the y value of 13 so how do you enter this data well again we press mode that brings us to this screen then you want the stats function again, so press 1. And then we want line this time. We're doing linear regression, so that, that's line there. That's what that represents. Press 1, and then you'll come to this screen here, the stat 1 line. So then you're ready to enter your data. Now, because we're entering two variables, you type 39 in, and then you need to press the, the X, Y button, because you're entering like coordinates almost. You're entering two data points. So I've copied it there, but it lives above the change button here. So you press that to get a comma, and then you type in 13. So you should read 39, comma 13, then press change, and that will enter that piece of data for you. Then you repeat the process, so 27, press XY to get your comma, then press 15, then press change, and that, that will come up data set 2, so that's two pieces of data. Once you've managed to enter all these um, data points in, to get the, the values that we need, we need what's called the, the gradient of the line and the y-intercept, and that's denoted by um, A and B. So the green A lives above the bracket here, 
and that's going to give you your y-intercept and the gradient lives above this bracket here the, the little green b to access the green functions you need to press alpha and then press bracket so that one for a or alpha and then the right hand bracket for the um, the gradient okay so just follow the steps that are on the screen and hopefully you'll get the value so i've, I've written them down here and the a value should be 26.58 and the B value should be minus 0.35. So pause the video and make sure you're getting those two values. The final um, function that we need to look at is from question six on paper two, and it's the product moment correlation coefficient. So you can see that here, product moment correlation coefficient and PMCC for short. So I'll be using that um, term from now on. So we've got two um, possible data sets here from this question and we need to work out um, in a later part of the question which one's most reliable, which one's the most reliable data by working out the PMCC and the PMCC is donate, um, has a little R on the calculator, it's represented by a little R and that lives above the divide sign. You can see it, maybe you can see it on there, but it lives above, look on your calculator, it lives above the divide sign, the green R. And if you want to work out the values, I've, I've written the answers here, 0 0.776 and 0 0.947. For this uh, question, the data is entered in the same way as you would the linear regression. So go back in and check the linear regression that I just went through. And that's how you enter this data as well, because these are, again, almost coordinates from a scatter graph. You could plot these on a scatter graph. So you'd use 157 for your X, then press XY, hit the comma, and then type in 154, and then press change to enter that, and then repeat that process just like you did for the data before in the linear regression part. The only difference is you just have to press, when you finish and you've pressed on C, you just press alpha, and then divide to get the R values. Okay, so pause the video and have a go at putting that data in for method A and then seeing, seeing if you get 0 0.776 when you press alpha divide. Okay, and then try it again for part B as well. So when you press alpha divide, you should get 0 0.947. I've rounded these figures up. Um, interestingly, in the mark scheme, if you're working with the mark scheme for this question, I think. Um, there's been a mistake made because method A, they're saying the value should be between 0 0.930 and 0 0.931. Now, I'm getting 0 0.776 and many students that have had a go have also got the same value. So, the second one is right. This is why I feel like the first one might be a mistake on the mark scheme because the second one is, is bang on the mark scheme. So, 0 0.776 is what you're looking for. Um, just to explain what, what the PMCC is, if you're not sure... It's to do with how correlated, how strong is the correlation of, of the data. So out of these two methods, which one is the best? Now you've got two numbers here, you've got 0 0.776 and you've got 0 0.947. So which is the strongest? You know, is it, is it the 0 0.947 or is it the 0 0.776? And here are some diagrams to, to kind of help you work out which one you think is the most correlated. And um, the highest value you can get for positive correlation is one and the data is in a perfect line if it's perfectly correlated it's just one straight line in the positive direction so that would be um, the best positive correlation here's an example of something a bit less than one so 0 0.7 might look something like this the data might be spread out like this zero is absolutely no correlation there's no pattern at all to the data and obviously you can have negative correlation as well so bear in mind it's not simply the, the smaller the value at the worst the correlation because if you go to minus one then you get a perfect negative so your data the r value will be between one for perfect positive and minus one for perfect negative so here's an example of a minus 0.7 again in the negative direction so which of these two is the most reliable well obviously it's got to be method b because it's very very close to one which means it's going to look something like this diagram here Whereas method A is 0.776, so it will look something like this diagram here. Okay, I hope that helps, guys. Um, please leave any comments, or if you want me to go into, 
through any questions, just leave um, a comment under the video. Thanks.